Okay. Um, we thank God for uh, this wonderful day. And I want to share with you what I call the Christian purity and holiness of heart. Christian purity and holiness of heart. We have been called to walk in holiness. We have been called by a holy God to walk before him. And if he is holy, the walk we have to walk with him is a holy walk. Um, and we will continue our study. We will take the scriptures from Ephesians chapter 4, 70 to 24. And I read. And this I say therefore and testify in the Lord that you should no longer walk as the rest of the Gentiles walk in the futility of their mind, having their understanding darkened, being alienated from, from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them, because of the blindness of their heart, who being past feeling have given themselves over to the lewdness to work all uncleanness with greediness. But you have not so learned Christ. And if indeed you have heard him and have been taught by him as the truth is in Jesus, that you put off concerning your former conduct, the old man, which grows corrupt according to the deceitful lusts, and renew and be renewed in the spirit of your mind, that you put on the new man, which was created according to God in true righteousness and holiness. Thank you for your word, Lord. Amen. As I've already mentioned, we we are called to walk in holiness. We we can't dodge this. We cannot run away from it. There's nothing we can do. Uh, it's a joy. It's a privilege. It's a blessing. It's not burdensome. It's not to give us load to carry. No, it's not. The call of God to humans is not to burden them. It's right to take the burden out of them. <clears throat> we, must, we must be willing to repent. We must be really willing to walk out and walk away from sin. We must be willing to do that. We cannot take God's grace for granted. Because we have Jesus and we have the grace of God, therefore we can do just anything that we want to do. We cannot do that. A Christian who continues to walk in sin, I would say he's not a Christian. Because the Bible says so. The Bible says that he that sins is of the devil. According to 1 John. And so if you call yourself a Christian and you continue to walk in sin, you may not like it. But I'll tell you what the Bible says is that you are a child of the devil. If I continue to walk in sin, I am nothing less than a son of the devil. I cannot continue to walk in sin and claim to be a Christian. The calling of God is a holy calling. <coughs> Let go of everything and follow him alone. Amen. It's not too difficult to do. Because we don't do it. Christ has done it, and the Spirit of God helps us. As we are willing 
as we are aware of the fact that we are in Christ, this does not mean that temptations will not come your way. Temptation will come every day. Every day we are tempted. And that is called the fight of faith, the good fight of faith. We are tempted every day. And if we are willing to walk with God truly, sincerely, there is always a way of escape, a way to help us out that will not fall prey to the enemy. So I encourage every one of us, as children of God, to run from sin, especially if there's anything that easily gets us, we need to run away from it. We cannot continue to indulge in sin and call ourselves children of God. That will not be. We'll be deceiving ourselves. But I was just, if we are the hearers of the word of God, but we do not put the word of God into practice, we deceive ourselves. We're here to practice. Amen. We hear the word of God to put into practice. How do we do this? We do this because we need, we need to know that we need to work differently. We need to work differently. We cannot continue to work the way we used to work in time past. Our talking must be different. We cannot continue to talk, use our tongue just the way we used to use our tongue when we were in the world. There must be a change. If we used to swear, we must change it now. We must begin to praise. If we used to lie and deceive, we must begin to say the truth. And we must think differently. We cannot continue to think the old way we used to think. See, this head, all kinds of ideas will come all the time. Good, bad, to come to this place, this head. <laughs> you, you cannot, there's nothing you can do. The ideas will come. But the question is, will you give in to the bad idea, to the evil idea? You have grace from God to reject every negative, every ungodly idea that comes to you. So there's a saying that you cannot prevent a bird from pooing into your head, but you can prevent from making nests in your head. Same way we, we cannot stop ideas from coming, negative ideas from coming to our mind. That's why you cannot. It's impossible. So when they are coming, don't, don't get frustrated. Don't say, oh, I am a Christian, but why am I still having this negative idea? And then you get frustrated and stressed as though you are, you, you are the worst of all the sinners. No. When the negative or evil ideas are dropping into your mind, they don't make you a sinner. No. It is when you put them into practice. Yes, in a way, some of these ideas will come because of our own negative desires. When we have negative desires, they can generate negative ideas. But even that, if the ideas are based on our negative or evil ideas, we still have the grace of God to resist them and to say no, to run away, to do something about it, to call a brother or a sister to pray with you so you can escape it. The Christian life is a practical life. It's not just theory. It's practical. <coughs> you can run away from the thoughts. You can change your location. 
You can change friendship. You can call on a brother or a sister to pray with you. And you'll be set free. There's a need for us to have different attitude. Life is very much about attitude. Our attitude. So, something bad can happen to two people, but they will, they will come out differently. Or a same, the same situation can happen to two people, but the end result will be different. It's not anything. It's not magical. It's, not, it's because of attitude also. Their approach to the situation, our attitude, and thank God for Jesus that our attitude is based on scripture. Christians, our attitude is based on scripture. Our behavior, our inclination, is based on scripture. And it's by the grace of God that we have that. And so we must allow ourselves to walk in that. The word of God has not come to us all the time in vain. It's not for nothing that we hear God's word all the time. It's not in vain that we have the Bible. It's not in vain. Now, when we hear the word of God all the time, the Bible says what? Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. In this short sentence, you can, you can hear emphasis. So much emphasis in this short sentence. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So we do not have the word of God for nothing. It's for a purpose. And as we hear the word of God, as we open up our hearts and accept the word of God, embrace God's word, our attitude is changed. And if you notice that a particular attitude you have is not changing, you have to be intentional about it and allow the word of God to change. That's why I talk about changing friendship, changing locations. If you if you are in a particular place and that is causing a problem, you can move. If you have a group of friends or you have a friend who is the problem, who is always the door for temptation to come in, who is always the door for, for you to be doing the wrong thing, then you can change friendship. You can cut that link. These are practical steps that we can take. If someone is always provoking you to anger, I advise you just ignore the person and step away from him or her. Not in hatred. No, you don't hate a person. We don't work in hatred. Now, when there's a hatred in your heart, you have to do all you can to make sure that hatred goes away before you step out of his life. Otherwise, when you step away from him in anger, in hatred, it's going to stay like that. And we cannot walk in hatred. Our attitude is very important. And so Jesus says something in Matthew chapter 18, verse 2 to 4. He said, And calling to him a child, he put him in the midst of them and said, Truly I say to you, unless you turn and become like children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Whoever humbles himself like this little that live like this child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Amen. Wow. Our attitude. This is calling for a change of attitude. We need to change. We must be intentional about it. When we hear the word of God, when we read the scriptures ourselves. These days, if it really is too boring for you, we have a a very wonderful way of living, listening to the word of God, audio. They, they've dramatized it nicely. Play it all the time. Put it in your car. Play it all the time. You hear the word of God. And when we hear God's word, we are edified. We are edified. And, and as we hear God's word and we respond to it, we change. We change as we respond to God's word. Let's all pretend, let's stop pretending to be 
so mature and so, you know, I, I, I don't see that here. But we, we need to know it and encourage others. It's good for us to walk in humility as though we are nothing before God and before one another. So we prefer one another, prefer your friend, your brother, over yourself. As though he knows better than you. I believe there's nothing absolutely wrong when someone is talking, even though you know, you just keep quiet and hear what he or she has to say. It's not because you don't know. It's not because you're a fool. It's because that's the spirit of Christ. You just listen. You listen. Especially in the house of God, among the children of God. So we do not struggle and fight among each other. And we can edify one another. We must be changed to become like children. Amen. We must become like children. We must have a childlike attitude. Ready to believe anything that the word of God says without question. Because this book cannot be questioned. And when Christ was making that statement, I believe he, was, he had this in mind. No, no question to the word of God. Believe what the word of God says. Because a child will believe anything that the father tells him or her. A child will believe it. Tell your child the whole world belongs to you. Your child will believe it. He will even go to school and tell his friend, the whole world belongs to my father. Do you know that? Because daddy said it. That's, that's the attitude that Bible is appealing to right now here. Amen. <laughs> believe. Because you are a child of God, you believe. You know your father. Believe your father. Believe the word of your father. And thank God he is true. God is true. Bible, he says that he is not a man, that he should lie. <laughs> Neither is he a son of man, that he should repent. There's no shadow of turning in him. What he says is true. So his words are trustworthy. And so if you, you change your, your life, your way of living according to scripture, and you appear to be a fool, weird, in the eyes of men, praise God. Praise God. Jesus was never appreciated in the, by the world anyway. He was laughed at. He was mocked. He was counted to be nobody. And yet he is the creator of all things. And he came and walked among us as though he knew nothing. In weakness of the flesh. Was hungry and thirsty, weak and feeble, spat on and beaten to death. We lose nothing if we follow his steps and others call us fools. You are blessed when people call you fools because of Christ. You are blessed if people think you are weak and because it is because of Christ. And you are blessed if you suffer anything in his name. It's a blessing. Amen. I believe that Christians are supposed to be people who really, really understand the value of words. We cannot downplay the value of words, the weight of words. Jesus said that no idle word that proceeds out of the mouth of anyone will go free and judged. Every word shall be weighed. The intention behind it, the desire behind that word. And so there's a need for us to. So if someone says, I'm a Christian, if, if, I, if you meet someone, how will you know the person? It's just by the person's words. You don't need to spend one week 
one month, one year with the person to know, to know who he or she is. Just keep talking, keep talking. And then you know the worth of the person. You know where he or she is coming from. Words are very important. Let our words change. Let's speak like Christians. Let's talk like Christians. Let the Bible, the word of God, filter the words from our mouth. Before the word comes out of your mouth, let it come through the filter of the word of God. So it comes pure. It comes out as, as word that will edify the one hearing you. So don't be blessed. And those who are not saved will be saved. But we don't go speaking the way an unbeliever speaks. We can't go speaking like someone on the street who doesn't know Jesus. We cannot speak the same way. I say that all the time. And I say with confidence and I'm sure of it. And I'm not going to change it. The man on the street who doesn't know Christ is different from you. You are different from him. You are not the same. You are a child of God, born again by the blood of Jesus, filled with the Spirit of God, and being sanctified daily and washed by the Word of God. You cannot be the same like someone who doesn't know Christ. You're not the same. The same way our talking must be different. And so Psalm 19, verse 4, verse, verse 14 says, Let the words of my mouth, the meditation of my heart, be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Hallelujah. The words of our mouth must be acceptable before God. But before it can be acceptable before, before him, I believe they must be filtered through the word of God. All the months, I mean, the word of God must be the foundation of what you say. When we meditate, what we meditate on, what we meditate on is what we say. What we think about all the time, when we are alone, what we think about most of the time, that's what we say. And that's what we would do. Jesus said, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. What we think about all the time is what you say. Amen. That's what we say. Luke 6, Luke 6 verse 45 says, the good person out of the good treasure of his heart, the good treasure of his heart. And we all know that none of us have any good treasure in our heart except the word of God. He's speaking about the word of God here. Now the good treasure we have in us is the word of God that we meditate on. If we think about the word of God, it becomes the treasure of our hearts. Amen. This is wisdom for living. If you want to have a peaceful life and a life that is satisfying and fulfilling, full of joy, we need to take this into consideration. Meditate on the word of God. Meditate on the word of God. And that will fill our hearts. And when we speak, we will speak peace. We will speak life. And the evil person, out of his evil treasure, produces evil. I mean, produces evil. For out of the abundance of the heart, mouth speaks. The mouth speaks. So when you meet someone, the person says, Yeah, I'm a Christian, I'm born again. That's okay. Jesus says, you will know them by their fruits. And one of the fruits is the words of the mouth. Just keep listening. And you will hear, and you will know whether the person is a child of God or not. Whether the person is a baby in the law or not. So let's listen to ourselves. So that we can measure whether we are growing in the Lord or we are not growing. 
If you are growing in the Lord, our words will be according to the word of God. Our words will be filtered by the word of God. If we are babies, we speak of ourselves. We speak of the world. We speak just like anybody else will speak and say anything. And some after said, oh, no, I was just joking. No, you can't joke with words. We don't, I prefer that you joke with an action than to joke with a word. It's a serious issue. Mm -hmm. Words are powerful. We cannot. Now, if our words are changed, our attitudes will change. If a change of words is an indication that your attitude is changing. Someone who doesn't respect others, you hear from the words. It's not only from his body language, but also from the words of his mouth or her mouth. Someone who does not fear God, you hear from the person's voice, his, his, his words. Someone who thinks about himself only and nothing else and nobody else, you hear from the words. But we are called to be Christ-centered, focus on Christ. Think about him. It is impossible for us to think about our neighbor if we don't focus first on Christ. Christ, Jesus, is all. The more we know him, the more we walk with him, the more we know ourselves, and the more grace we receive to walk away from the past and let, be, let go of the past and let go of the old man and put off the old man. And we can put on the new man created in Christ Jesus. No, it was an attitude that caused the woman, the widow whose son was dead. And he ran to Elisha. When she was running to her, the husband was like, what's the problem with you? You seem to be, to be in so much hurry. What's the problem? He said, no, there's nothing wrong. All is well. She met somebody and so the person was like, why are you so much in a hurry? Is everything OK? Are you all right? Say, everything is all right. Now her focus is on God, not on anything else, not even on herself. And he got so close to the man of God, and then the servant of the man of God, he has, he was like, you know, are you okay? He said, yes, are you okay? Our attitude, how will we respond to the situation? Even in the face of death, how do we respond? Amen. Christians, we have life. Jesus said, if you believe in me, even though you die, now shall you live. That should be our attitude. We have life of God in us. We have the life of God in us. We operate from the life of God. That's the base of our attitude. Right from the life of God that is in us. That's how we respond to life. Matthew 16, 22 to 23. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him, saying, Far be it from you, Lord, this shall, not, this shall never happen to you. But he turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are a hindrance to me, for you are not setting your mind on the things of God, but on things, on the things of man. When we set our mind on the things of man, 
or things about ourselves only, we begin to speak about things of men and not the things of God. If we want our words to change, let's fix our mind on the Lord. Allow the word of God to impact your life. Let's apply the word of God to our lives. And our thinking will change. Our thinking will be about God, about the kingdom of God. So that in every situation, we will ask ourselves, God, what are you doing? What, what are you about in this situation? We will still find and we'll hear the voice of God in that. And we'll find wisdom as to how to handle the situation. This is a life of holiness. Amen. It's a life of holiness. We are called to walk with him. It's a life of purity. As we focus more on God, our words are purified, our minds are cleansed, and we are transformed. Unless we are transformed, unless our minds are transformed, we, there will be no change in our lives. That's why Romans calls on us to change our minds. It's a be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. It's an injunction on us. It's a, we are called to do it. It's not like, oh, please try. No. It says, be transformed. <laughs> Amen. It's an imperative. It's, it's a command. Be transformed. I have no other way. Let's allow the word of God. If we accept the word of God, we'll be transformed. And that brings us into a life of purity and holiness before God. As the word of God changes the way we think and the way we speak and what we do. Unless the word of God changes us, in public we'll be one person, and then when we are all alone secret, we'll be another person. Or in public we'll be one person, and in the house we'll be different. But if the word of God transforms and changes us, we'll be the same everywhere we go. And that is what God expects of each one of us. So we have nothing to hide. And so we are not accused by the enemy. And so when we stand before God, we stand in confidence. Amen. We have received grace in Christ unto maturity and righteousness and holiness. You don't have any excuse. I don't have it either. I'm writing an article for, for a paper, I mean for a magazine, and it's about you must not commit for, um, adultery. Then I was right and I said, well, I believe that most men dread this command, commandment. We wish God would be a little bit lenient on that. <laughs> but no. So what do we do? How, how do we survive? How do we keep ourselves pure? In our thinking, in the words we speak, in our actions. How do we do it? The Bible says, how can a young man keep his word pure? He says, except he, keep your, he keeps your word in his heart. If we keep the word of God in our hearts, we change. Amen. And so we do not go defiling ourselves and making ourselves dirty before God. And therefore we cannot approach him. We become accused when we stand before him. And that makes our prayers non-effective. When you stand before God in accusation, when you are, you are feeling guilty in his presence, 
you do not act in faith. Let's fill our hearts with the word of God. And we'll keep our ways pure. And our walk with God will be different. And our ways will be pure. And that is the prescription of scripture, the Bible, the word of God. How can a young man keep his ways pure? By keeping your word in his heart. By hiding your word in his heart. Let's hide the word of God in our heart. Speak it to ourselves. As we walk in the day, as we walk around, speak the word of God. Encourage yourself with it. Memorize the scripture. How many scriptures do you have you memorized that you can speak to yourself in situations? How much of the word of God do you have so that when you are faced with a situation, you can call on, on the word of God and speak it to the situation? How much? When Jesus will be tempted, he will speak the word of God to the tempter. He said, get it behind me, for it is written. You must not put the Lord your God to test. Get it behind me, Satan, which I'm about to anyone except the Lord your God. We need to know the scripture to speak to situations that we find ourselves in. Get to the word of God. You feel depressed? Then that's, there are words of God you have to speak to lift yourself up. Amen. Depression is not of God. I don't like that pretense and say, oh, and, and allowing people to walk in depression and tired. And It's not of God. The joy of the Lord is our strength. Amen. Depression does not come from God. Every situation we face, we have the word of God to challenge it and come out. Every situation. God will not leave himself without witness. He has spoken his word to us. His word is our witness, is his witness. That I have spoken to you, my sons. And so I would say, listen to my word, pay attention to my words, my son. We are encouraged to hide the word in our heart. That's what Proverbs says. Amen. In every difficult situation we find ourselves in, there is the word of God that we can stand on. Can I hear amen? amen. It's our attitude toward the word of God. How do you regard the word of God? How do you regard it? How do you regard the scripture? You think it's just a novel? That is the word of God. Amen. Can I hear amen? Amen. It is the word of God. What is your attitude towards the scripture? There's a song which says, if you prefer the Lord, call him up. If you believe in him, call on his name. Bible says, stand still and know that I am God. We must learn to call upon the name of the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. And the Lord strengthen you. Our attitude is very important. It's an amazing statement in verse 20. It says, but you have not learned so Christ. You have not learned so Christ. You have, that's not the way you have learned about Christ. So it means we need to learn, learn about Christ, learn who he is, and put that into practice. That's, what is, that's the implication of this verse. Our life must be a life after Christ. Would Christ open his mouth and speak negative words? Words that would defile people? Would he do that? He would not. Why then should we? 
That's what scripture is saying. But you have not so learned Christ, if indeed you have heard him and have been taught by him as the truth is in Jesus. Hallelujah. So here Paul is saying that if you want someone teaches you about Jesus, it's as though Jesus himself talking to you, teaching you. So we are all taught of Christ. We're taught by him as we hear the word of God. And as we read the scripture on our own, as we spend time to study the word of God, we are being taught by Christ. And if we are indeed taught by him, what have we learned from him? And what we've learned from him, we must put into practice. We must do. Amen. We must say, we must do. Matthew 11, 29, 30 says, Take my yoke. That's just we're speaking right now. He says, Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For I am gentle and lowly and lowly in heart. And you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. So Jesus is inviting us to do what? To learn from him. Take the yoke of his, the burden of his, and put on ourselves. Now, whether we like it or not, no one can live in this life without yoke, without burden. Whether you're a Christian or a non-Christian, you carry some form of a burden or another. And you carry some form of a yoke or another. But here Christ openly invites us and says, Lay off me, take my yoke, take my burden. My yoke is easy on you, and my burden is light. Why? Because the Spirit of God will help us. He helps us. Why? Because Jesus himself has already nailed it to the cross. The sting, the poison, the venom of sin and death on the cross. And he set us free by that. Hallelujah. And that makes our walk with God enjoyable. And so I tell people all the time, a Christian walk is not burdensome. Christian, Christian walk is not a difficult thing. You don't think that way. It's not a difficult thing. If we think that way, it's because we focus on ourselves. We think we have to do it. We don't do it. The Spirit of God works in us as we are willing to obey Him and walk with Him sincerely. Some run to church because they want to, they are, they are afraid of hell. Some run to church because they want to get business partners. Some run to church because they want to get a partner to marry. All kinds of ideas. But if you are in church truly because you love the Lord, you are following Him because you love Him, Christian life is too difficult. I say this all the time, but no. It's not that difficult. It's just, Jesus says it. He said, My life, but he said, My yoke is easy on you. It's easy. That's what he says. And my burden is light. It's about our attitude. How we look at it. How we think about it. It's about our attitude. We need to change the attitude. Amen. Mm -hmm. We must change our attitude. See the word of God as it is. He says, it's easy. It's light. And so it is. <laughs> Hallelujah. I pray that you understand what I'm saying. And you will agree with me. Now, God appeared to Moses and uh, to Abraham and said, in Genesis 17:1. When Abraham was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to him and said, I am God Almighty. Walk before me and be blameless. Wow. 
And it was at a time there was no law. The time of Abraham was a time of grace as well. Abraham walked in grace. And the Lord appeared to him and said, walk before me and be blameless. Walk before me and be pure. Walk before me and be holy. Our call, our calling in Christ is a call unto holiness. But thank God for Jesus who has accomplished on the cross. Ours is to have faith in him. Put the word of God to practice. Hallelujah. Yes. Put it into practice. I say all the time, if you have any struggle anywhere, run to the Lord. There's a way of escape. You can escape. I believe that. I know it. Because I, we, we've all been there. We, are, we, we were all sinners saved by the grace of God. We all have the struggle with the flesh, with the desire of the flesh, the desire of the, you know, the pride of life. And we all have the issue that, that is common to every man. Nobody can escape that. But there's a way of escape in Christ Jesus. I encourage you, take your burden, take your cross, take your weight, take it to Christ. His burden, I know, is not heavy. And his yoke is light. Amen. Amen. If you think the burden you have is too heavy for you, it's not from Christ. If you think your Christian life it becoming a burden for you and it's too heavy, that's not of God. Never. Because the burden that comes from Christ is light. The yoke that comes from him is easy. By his grace and by his spirit at work in us, and by the washing of his word, it's easy. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Christian life. Yesterday I was watching an interview of the guy who acted the Passion of Christ on YouTube. I was watching him, they were interviewing him. And then he gave us he, he told a story of a of a group of people in Soviet Union at the Soviet Union at the time. And how they were being killed. To match them and, and put the crucifix down, they put the cross down, say, okay, step on it and, and curse it. And we will set you free. The believers, one by one, said, No, I will not. And they'll kill them right there. One after the other. Do you think if we were doing in themselves, they would have done that? No. We have the grace to walk on death, we have the grace to walk through, we have the grace to go through life. It is a grace of God. Let's have this attitude. I think it takes the grace of God. If we, are, if we are struggling with anything, let's turn it over to the Lord. We carry needless burdens. And as some says, because we do not take them to, to God in prayer. Let's carry our burdens to him in prayer. And give our burdens to him and take his. He's burning his light. Hallelujah. We must not scare the young people away as though Christian life is so easy, it's so difficult. Let us, let, they must know that the, the life in Christ is the best. And that is true. Hallelujah. That is true. Does it mean I don't have any troubles? Oh, no. There are troubles. But what I'm saying is that the grace we have in Christ, the Spirit of God in us, the word of God we have to guide us. But it makes life easier for us to live on this earth. Mm -hmm. Now, life without Christ, you can imagine what it is. So difficult. Speak to someone who doesn't have Christ. You know what I'm talking about. They really struggle. That's, that's a problem. That's burden. That's trouble. That's pain. They can't even sleep. But you can sleep. You can laugh. You can rejoice. That's the life of God. Christian life is not a burden. It's our attitude. Amen. So 
attitude. Don't say anymore, oh, Christian life is difficult. It's not. There's a truth, it's not. Jessica. It's, it's not. We are called to put off the old man. There was a way we used to walk when we were in the world without Christ. There was a way we used to talk. There was a way we used to think. We, can, we are called not to think that way anymore. We are called not to walk that way again. But stop it. You know how you used to think in the past. You know it. You know the things you used to do in the past. I don't know. You know. I, I know what I used to do in the past. I know what I used to think in the past. I know how I used to think in the past. I can't go back to that and begin to think that way. You do the same. That's the old man. Amen. You say, oh, I was born in a Christian family. So, so what? <laughs> we all had a past. Every one of us. So Bible says, don't think about, don't think the way you think anymore. Think in a new way. Think according to scripture. Think according to the word of God. You do that, you walk in holiness and purity. Colossians 3, 8 to 11 says, but now you must put them all away. That's what, talking about the old man. Anger, wrath, malice, slander, obscene talks from your mouth. Do not lie to one another, seeing that you have put off the old man or the old self with its practices and have put on the new man, which is being renewed, you see? It's being renewed. It's, 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 it's a daily thing. It continues until the Lord comes. It's being renewed. The new man is being renewed in knowledge after the image of each creator, which is Christ. Here there is not Greek, Jew, circumcised or non-circumcised, barbarian or Scythian, slave or free. But Christ is all and in all. Christ in all. It's all about Christ. Let Christ be our focus. Amen. Let Christ be our focus. He died, was buried, and rose again for you and for me. And we might walk with God. Amen. Christian life is not a burden. I, re I know very well when I became a Christian. I know what I was going through. I know the struggle. I know the weights. The weight on my heart and my mind. And when I knew Christ, when I received him, I know again how I feel. How I feel up to date. How I feel. And how I, how I used to feel. It was the Lord. It was a life without hope. You think you know, but you don't know. You group in darkness. But when you come to Christ, you know you are standing on a solid ground. You are standing on the rock. You are standing on a substance, the substance of life, the giver of life in all things. Amen. God bless you as you walk with him. Have a wonderful and blessed week in Jesus' name.